So, Bitcoin's pumping again. And if you've been in the crypto world, you've probably heard someone in the last few months throw around crazy numbers like a million dollars a coin. And for me, this does one of two things. On one hand, it just sounds absolutely absurd. I mean, we're only just at $20,000 per token and you're saying this thing's going to 50X. In the traditional normal markets, that would take hundreds of years. But on the other hand, honestly, it just gives me a lot of FOMO. Because by Bellagy speaking this into existence, I've started to ask myself what would actually have to happen in order for us to see a million dollar Bitcoin. So after spending a few hours researching what the Bitcoin maxis are saying, the big brains in the crypto space, the smartest people, including Bellagy himself, something really strange happened. I actually started to become a believer. And right now, I'm actually really confident that Bitcoin will hit the $1 million mark, and potentially sooner than we think. So to help you think that I'm not as crazy as I might come across right now, I'm giving you the four scenarios that could happen that would make us see a $1 million Bitcoin. If you're excited for it, hit that like button down below, put on your Bitcoin maxi hat, and let's jump in. Okay, first things first, let's get really clear on the goal. What does a million dollar Bitcoin even look like? Of course, yes, Bitcoin is a million dollar per token, but what does that mean for the market cap? Well, there will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin in existence. And for each of these 21 million Bitcoin to be worth a million dollars, the total market cap of the Bitcoin protocol would be valued at $21 trillion. And right now, you probably already know this, it's valued at just over half a trillion. So let's go on a little adventure together and see where the hell another $20 trillion could be coming from. Well, the first approach I saw was really interesting. It's called the macro approach. It's not actually called that, but I've just named it it. So this is the macro approach. And the macro approach starts by zooming all the way out to seeing the world as a marketplace and then finding out the value of that marketplace. What is the total fully diluted market cap of all of the assets in the world, including commodities, stocks, bonds, derivatives, real estate, cash, cryptocurrencies added all together. Now, of course, it's really hard to actually do this math. And I've seen a lot of conflicting numbers, but I came across a couple of sources that are semi-reliable that have the same math. And they estimate that the world's market cap is a one jillion dollars. <gasps> About 1.5 quadrillion dollars, which to simplify that down into trillions is 1,540 trillion. Now, out of all this wealth, how much is currently stored in Bitcoin? Well, as we just found out, a little less than half a trillion, which is about 0.033% of the world's value. Now, let's keep things really simple for this macro scenario. We're going to say Bitcoin is going to grow 0% relative to every single other asset in the world, but it's going to to maintain its percentage. And if you have a look at how fast the global market cap of the entire world has grown over the last 20 years, it's about 10% a year. And therefore, if Bitcoin was just to grow at the normal rate that the world is growing, the globe is growing due to more population coming in, due to people be coming online and having access to Bitcoin, in order for Bitcoin to reach the $1 million mark, it would take just 37 years. Okay, sure, 37 years is a decent amount of time, but it's still going to hit the million dollar market cap if it just fixes itself to the average growth rate of everything else in the world. But if you're like me, you probably want to see things happen a little bit faster. So let's go over to option two. And this option is called Bitcoin takes market share from other assets. A little less of a crunchy name, but that's what it's called. Because we know that Bitcoin is just 0.033% of the total assets of the world. What happened if it started to eat up the market share of some of these other assets? Well, let's have a look at one of the most common comparisons, Bitcoin versus gold. Now, gold is a very popular store of value. It's currently more than 25 times bigger than Bitcoin at a $13 trillion market cap. But as you probably already know, Bitcoin beats gold as a store of value in almost every single category. One, it's more portable. Obviously, you can securely send 100 million Bitcoin across the world in a few seconds for very little fees. Where if you try to do this with gold, it probably costs a million dollars in logistics and security and probably a week or two to actually arrive. Two, it's more divisible. You can instantly break a Bitcoin down into tiny fractions of a penny. Whereas gold may need to be manually chipped away or melted down and the mere labor cost of this is probably going to be worth more than the actual speck of gold dust that you're going to get in return. Number three, it's more scarce. There are a maximum of 21 million Bitcoins in the world and there always will be. About 90% of these are already circulating and every four years they get a programmatic supply shock. This is known as the Bitcoin halving where gold inflates more and more every year and the rate of inflation is increasing as more and more gold mining companies are coming around and both as the price of gold in a lab might be become cheaper as technology develops. And the fact that we're getting closer to mining gold on asteroids, this is probably not as safe and non-inflationary of an asset as you might believe it to. And number four, 
Bitcoin is getting more and more use cases, as practical uses of gold are really quite limited to jewelry, orthodontics, and electronics, which are easily substitutable for other metals, where Bitcoin is becoming more widely accepted with over 420 million users, including 1 million users onboarded in just one weekend, and more and more business corporations and even countries are recognizing this as currency. Now, once again, despite this, gold's market cap is more than 25 times the size of Bitcoin. And even though Bitcoin is, say, 10 times better than gold, let's just give it a two times market cap. Meaning we'll take gold's 13 trillion and substitute that into Bitcoin, giving it a $26 trillion market cap, which would give the price of an individual Bitcoin a value of $1.238 million per coin. And we haven't even talked about any of these other assets that Bitcoin could take market share from. But let's go on to scenario number three. This is called demand skyrockets and supply stays the same because we already know that the supply of Bitcoin is fixed. And unlike the US dollar or unlike gold, as long as demand is increasing for Bitcoin, the price will go up with it. So let's explore three really simple use cases and adoptions of Bitcoin that would give Bitcoin a massive increase of demand. Number one is the remittance market. This is where one country will send money to another country like the US did to the Ukraine. Of course, using fiat, it's really slow, really expensive, and it's closed on weekends. So Bitcoin is an undeniably better system and the remittance market is valued at $600 billion a year. That's a lot of value that Bitcoin can capture. And that takes us on to number two, high net worth individuals, millionaires and billionaires. There's over 56 million millionaires in the world, meaning that if every millionaire wanted to own one Bitcoin, they couldn't. If they put just 5% of their portfolio into Bitcoin, Bitcoin's market cap would skyrocket $4 trillion, giving it an increased value of over $200,000 per token. And the third use case could be institutional investors, big investment firms around the world like BlackRock. If they wanted to put just two and a half percent of their portfolio into Bitcoin, the market cap would once again skyrocket by four trillion dollars and increase the price another 200,000. Now, it's important to note there is also a multiplier effect here. We're not going to go into too much detail, but, it, but I will give you the basics because it's very important to know. When most people calculate how much capital needs to flow into Bitcoin to push it to a million dollars, they assume we need 21 trillion dollars of capital inflows. This is wrong because it ignores the Bitcoin multiplier effect. Now, the Bitcoin multiplier effects basically works because over 78% of people who hold Bitcoin have not moved it in over a year. And including the Bitcoin that is dead and unrecoverable, there's only about three to five millions of Bitcoin liquidity truly in the market. And between 2018 and 2023, for every $1 that attempted to buy Bitcoin, it actually increased the market cap by 2.6x, which means we don't actually have to see $21 trillion of money go into the Bitcoin protocol for it to be worth 21 trillion, but just $8 trillion, which the fact is we talked about just earlier would do this. Now, if these scenarios are intriguing you to buy some more Bitcoin, you should listen up. Because if you're familiar with someone like Alex Becker, he might also be familiar with his trickle down thesis, which states if Bitcoin was going to go from 30 grand all the way up to $100,000 in the next couple of months, the lower market caps below it with really good technology would do a much higher return. Just take a look at how Polygon far outperformed Bitcoin in the last bull market. But knowing the next polygons and the next up and coming tokens is really difficult. So I could get a competitive edge in this market, I started doing something simple. I started tracking the portfolios and the new crypto purchases of the big brain crypto influencers with millions of followers who also have a little bit of influence over the market. And since then, I've been using buy alert software on people like Gary V or Alex Becker. So we know exactly when they buy and what they're buying. And this gives us the opportunity to research it for ourselves and get in before they shill it to their millions of followers. Now, recently, I even made a portfolio tracker so you can track all of the coins that Alex Becker is holding off of centralized exchanges across all of the chains, across all of his known wallets, and it updates every single day. And if you'd also like access to these really awesome tools to help you get a competitive edge in the market, I highly, highly recommend you check out our Patreon, where you'll get access to these softwares, really awesome tools, crypto breakdowns from rising tokens, and really crunchy cheat sheets to help save you weeks of research. I'll leave the link in the description below if you are interested. If not, keep enjoying the free stuff. Which takes us to the fourth scenario. This one's called hyper-Bitcoinization. Tough word to say. And this is probably the craziest out of all the scenarios 
experience that we've talked about. Because it's less about Bitcoin skyrocketing in value and more about the US dollar plummeting. Because if you think about the US dollar, it's lost over 96% of its purchasing power in just a hundred years. Now, if inflation just continues to occur as it does with the US dollar, it's going to naturally give you a million dollar Bitcoin as the dollar becomes less and less valuable. But this is going to take many years. You're probably aware there's people out there predicting that the US is going to enter hyperinflation, which is technically defined as prices going up 50% month over month. And I know this might sound crazy and you may not have heard of it before, but it's happening and it's happened consistently in history to some of the biggest empires of the world. Now, this would mean Bitcoin by default, of course, would cross the million dollar versus the US dollar mark way quicker. But you also have to factor in if the US dollar does start plummeting, where do people turn to in order to store their value? It's going to be tough to convince people to invest in the Chinese RMB. The euro might be a good option, but there's only one currency that can't be controlled, manipulated or centralized by one authority. Take a look at this fascinating video of the world's assets over time when compared to Bitcoin. Bitcoin is the only true decentralized store of value with a transparent, fixed and limited supply. It's a brilliant asset class, but there is one complication and that is the potential for Craig Wright, aka Satoshi Nakamoto to actually bring it all crumbling down. This of course is an insanely controversial opinion, but it's something that you may need to be aware about before you plunge a lot of your net worth into something like Bitcoin.